have the toughness necessary to play behind the plate. Well, I'll tell you what, when you start blocking pitches, you're going to find out in a hurry if you have that degree of toughness. When we work through blocking pitches, we first want to show what options are available to us. The thing you need to keep in mind as the options are shown and you get comfortable doing one or the other, that you make sure that you work at them virtually on a daily basis. And if you don't, then you're not going to be able to block a pitch. You're going to take pitches away from your pitch. You're going to give up runs. You're going to allow base runners to advance when they have no business advancing. You've got to stick your nose in there and get the job done. You might notice we've got a couple bats laid out, and these are just used as props. Whenever we talk about blocking a pitch, we always want to make sure that when that pitch hits us, it comes back toward the middle of the diamond or back toward the plate. So rather than having our legs parallel to each of the back lines on the uh, batter's box, we want our legs to be parallel to either one of these bats, depending on which side the ball comes on. If the ball goes straight down the middle, we'll drop down the middle. Let's take a look at blocking technique. Okay, from a normal position, normal receiving position, we're going to block a pitch right in front of us. What I'd like for you to do is just kick your feet out from underneath you, and we drop down. Now, you'll notice he's got his meat hand protected behind the glove. His shoulders are rounded. Ball's going to hit the chest and drop forward. He's got his chin tucked to his chest so that the ball can't come up and get him. He's in pretty good position there. All right, J.D., back up. Let's drop and do the same one again. Drop. There. The key in blocking pitch is to make sure don't catch the ball. We're not interested in catching the ball. The instant you try to catch the ball, up comes your glove, ball goes right between the legs. Block the pitch. Cover the hole with the hands like J.D. has it right here. Block the hole here. Cover the meat hand. Round the shoulders. Tuck the chin. We're in great shape. He's done his job. Okay, back up. Now we're going to block a pitch to your left. We're going to try to get ourselves parallel to the baseball bat on this side of the diamond and on this side of the batter's box. Ready? Drop. Okay. All right, back up. And let's walk through that technique. First option, we're going to kick, take the foot and slide it out this way, and we're going to move to meet it with the rest of the body here. As we move to meet it, we'll put our body in position that's parallel to the bat so that when the ball hits the chest, it hits and comes back to the middle of the field. If J.D. goes parallel to the batter's box, slide around to it the wrong way, goes parallel here, the ball hits and slides away. And then we end up with a runner advancing. Okay, back up. All right, let's try it to the right. On this one, we kick the right foot out, slide step, move to meet the ball. Ball hits the chest, drops back to the middle of the field. Notice how he's got himself set parallel to this bat, and that allows the ball to come back to the center of the field. Option two requires quick feet. This may be more along the lines for a high school player. J.D.'s a very advanced catcher for a high school player. Uh, college players, and you'll see some pro players do this too. This is almost a jump one direction or the other. Both feet move at the same time, and it's a jump out. Now, on the second option, the ball that's in the dirt, we do exactly the same way as the first option. Kick the feet out, straight down. Boom, right there, back up. Okay, here's the second option, ball right and ball left. Let's go ball left to begin with. Ready? Go. Notice how he just kicked both feet out and slid. He's in the exact same position he was in uh, on the first option now that he's into the second one, yet he did it a little bit quicker. Okay, hop back up. Let's go to the left again. Ready? Go. See how he just hopped over with both feet. Back up. You gotta have a catcher that's got some pretty good quickness here. You're wasting your time. Okay, we're going to the right. Ready? Go. Boom. Back up. One more time. Ready? Go. Very nice. Good technique. He's got himself protected and he's got the ball heading back the direction of the plate that we want it. If we can get that far, then if we can overcome the fear of the ball, once we get one moving to the catchers, boy, we're in pretty good shape. I want to talk just briefly about how we handle the breaking ball. J.D., as you, as you may be able to see, does a good job moving right and left and blocking pitches in front of him and how he doesn't try to catch the ball, he tries to block it. But the breaking ball is just a little bit different. J.D., why don't you go ahead and get set up for us? Many people are under the mistaken impression that when a pitcher throws a breaking ball, one of two things happens. On the breaking ball that, that hits the dirt, if it's a right-hander throwing it and it breaks and hits the ground, some people are under the impression that the ball just keeps running outward this way. Or the second impression that they're under is when the ball hits, it tails back this way. Actually, with the breaking ball, when it hits the ground, it pretty much goes straight back. So what J.D. or any other catcher, for that matter, has to do with the breaking pitch is determine where that ball is going to hit the ground and try to get right behind it. So if the breaking ball were to hit here, 
he's going to want to put his body right behind it because at that point it's going to shoot almost straight backwards and then he's in position to be able to block it so he's got to have a little bit of imagination on the breaking ball get behind where that ball's at and again run through your same good solid technique in terms of blocking a pitch See how he smothers it? Blocks it straight down. Very nice. To the right. Nice block. Again. Notice how he's not trying to catch the ball, he's trying to block the ball. Nice block. Good block. Good. Very nice. Those are two options regarding the technique that you'll want to run your catchers through on blocking. And again, if you don't do this on a daily basis, they're not going to get very good at it. And if they don't get very good at it, Confidence level shot, which means your pitcher doesn't have any confidence throwing one of these balls in the dirt to the catcher. So let's make sure we get some time and spend some time making your catchers really good at blocking pitches. Mm -hmm.